This week, we saw the clearest signs yet of the United States dollar falling off a cliff. And the moves that Russian President Putin and China's Xi Jinping just made are crushing to the West. That's when over $300 billion in Russian foreign reserves were frozen by the collective West. It was all part of the plan. We have been warning that this would happen. And now it's unfolding largely as we predicted. By NATO, of course, since 2014, launching a proxy war in Ukraine by provoking Russia, keep attacking the Donbass region for nine or 10 years, violate the Minsk peace agreements that you have with Russia. And then when the bear has finally had enough, uh, enough of people getting killed, they invade. They invade and they call it a special military operation. And then NATO and President Biden say, yes, Putin fell for our trap. Now we can turn the world against him, freeze all of his assets. Today, I'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to Russia. And the Russian people can rise up and overthrow Putin. That was the plan. Yeah, how'd that work out for us? Again, the plan not only failed, it had the opposite effect on a grand level. It is the plan that reordered the unipolar order. You see, the data now shows us that when the West froze Russia's assets, Every other country on the planet began fearing for their own U.S. dollars that were stored abroad. Quick side note, the European Union has admitted that they don't even know where the $300 billion are that they froze. So they froze them, they just have no idea where they are. Even though they don't know where these assets are, all of these other countries are like, wait a second, the U.S. can just freeze our U.S. dollars, weaponize their currency against whomever it wants? Oh yeah, they can. They're the bullies. In fact, the United States is the biggest bully in the world with nearly 800 military bases worldwide and a currency that it uses as a cudgel, a weapon through sanctions to get what it wants, to destabilize countries from the Middle East to Africa and everywhere in between. But what happens when it doesn't work anymore? Ah, that's exactly what's happening. In fact, this move against Russia had the opposite effect. It scared a lot of these fence-sitting countries, countries that were thinking of maybe, you know, staying with the West, but also thinking about joining the BRICS nations of Russia, China, India, Brazil, and South Africa. In the past year, countries watched what the U.S. did to Russia and decided to part ways with the U.S. dollar. That's right. The dollar share of global reserves was 73% in 2001. That's huge. 55% in 2021. 47% in 2022. The key takeaway is that last year the dollar share slid 10 times faster than the average over the past two decades since 2001. And this week Argentina parted ways with the US dollar. Argentina will now pay for the bulk of its monthly imports from China in the Chinese Yuan rather than US dollars. Buenos Aires and Beijing signed a currency swap agreement last year. Now it's in place. And analysts predict that the US dollar could fall to 30% of the world's reserve currencies by the time the election rolls around for Biden in 2024. That's not good news for him. And if you're wondering, how has the United States been able to bully and keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency for 50 years? Well, this video explains it perfectly. at which he won 14 gold medals. The U.S. dollar has remained as a strong hegemony for years because we will use military force. We will come in, we will destabilize your country, destabilize your currency, foment a coup. That's how we keep in power. That's been 50 years. Here's the ultimate question we need to confront right now in the West. How long can the United States and Western countries continue this financial charade? The West has no commodities, they're sitting on them, but their climate policies are keeping them from pulling them out of the ground. Europe is producing none of its natural gas. The U.S. is producing virtually no lithium, no uranium, cobalt, or any of the other list of commodities that we need to run an economy. China, Russia, and Brazil, on the other hand, all the BRICS nations, control all of the commodities. And the West controls the money. See, see what they did? They built their economies around good old manufacturing and commodities extraction. The United States outsourced it. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. So here's the question. What happens when the West doesn't control the money anymore? What do they have left? Well, their militaries, of course. 
And that's when desperate people do desperate things. This week, we saw a jaw-dropping moment. For the first time ever, China's yuan surpassed the United States dollar to become the most used currency in China's cross-border transactions. That means cross-border payments and receipts in yuan surged from $434 billion in February to a record $549 billion in March, a $100 billion increase in one month, according to Reuters. This reflects a huge shift away from the dollar, as well as Beijing's efforts to promote the use of the yuan. The share of the greenback, the U.S. dollar, in China's international settlements dropped from 48% in February to 46% last month. Over 70% of trade deals between Russia and China now use either the ruble or the yuan. The dollar? What dollar? We're not using it anymore. Last week, Russia's Sergei Lavrov spoke before the United Nations and said the de-dollarization process cannot be stopped. Just look at what's happening this week to precious minerals and commodities trading. Right now, Russia and African nations are moving towards settlements in national currencies away from the U.S. dollar. Russia and India are trading oil and rupees. Less than four weeks ago, Banco Bacom, BBM, became the first Latin American bank to sign up as a direct participant of the cross-border interpayment system known as SIPS, which is the Chinese alternative to the Western-led the SWIFT system. This is huge. The West has been using the SWIFT system to sanction the world, essentially. But what if they decide not to use it anymore? And that's exactly what they're doing. China and France just signed their first natural gas trade. Did they do it in the dollar? Nope. It's being traded in the yuan on the Shanghai Petroleum Exchange. In short, de-dollarization is the biggest danger that the United States faces. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and it's done. It will take years. But now it's been going faster than anybody expected over the past three years. The pace is now unstoppable. 